Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Gilman. I am the content executive at Higher Things. And joining me today on the Drive to School podcast is Pastor Jeremy Jacoby of Summit of Peace Lutheran Church. How you doing, friend? Doing great. How about yourself? I am cold and miserable, but your warm personality and lack of sarcasm will bring me ah, okay, cheer good. <laughs> today. So let's crash and burn this thing. Um, Pastor, you are here uh, because we want to start to do a series together on um, how to talk to my friends about. Uh, there's a lot of things that we believe, um, but either sometimes struggle how to explain it or, or um, how to explain it in a loving way, or, or just we, we have topics that are kind of loaded topics. And so right. we want to make yeah. sure that we can share the gospel in a way that's actually uplifting uh, so that the people walk away learning something, but also hopefully finding comfort for their souls, right? Right. Yep. Absolutely. So um, we thought we would start out with something lighthearted. Um, Pastor, <laughs> How do I talk to my friends about suicide? Yeah. Oh, man, that's uh, such an important question, especially right now, right? Uh, I'm sure everybody's familiar with the mental health crisis going on with people after COVID, but especially our young people as they're just wrestling with all that means. And um, <clears throat> I don't know what your experience in your part of the country, but we've seen the escalation in our schools around the area of, of um, uh, mental health issues, depression, but even but even suicide. So, yeah, it's a it's a great one. Um, yeah, so it's funny as we were thinking about this topic, I was remembering all the way back to my seminary days when I had a, a one of professors would always, when we talk about questions like this, would say, uh, we should always ask also what the question is behind the question, right? And so um, it's funny when you're, if you're going to talk to friends about this topic, um, uh, and I don't think this is disingenuous, but part of it is to figure out what, what are, what's their approach, right? Someone could be coming to you because a friend of theirs or a family member has committed suicide. Someone could be coming to you because they want to talk to their friend who's thinking about it, right? And so there's this different spectrum, which doesn't mean the truth that we have to say is different, but the approach we might take is is different, right? So um, actually to be uh, kind of just really brutally honest. So when I was in high school, I um, my parents were um, out of town with my sister on a gymnastics trip and I had all the school stuff going on, girlfriend stuff going on. It's hard going back all those years to, to know really how serious I was about it. But I went and sat in the uh, garage uh, with my car running door down for... I don't know, five minutes or so. Um, but I can honestly tell you at the moment, one of the reasons that I stopped was I didn't know what would happen to my soul. But that, for me at that time in my life, um, that was a question, right? It was something I wasn't, I wasn't absolutely sure about. Um, and so on the one hand, um, that's an area where as strange as it might sound, um, the law, you might say, protected me from myself, right? Yeah. Um, so having that, that question remaining in my mind, um, and yet, uh, over the years having, uh, you know, dealt with other people, other families and stuff like that, um, you know, I believe our God is, um, much more gracious. And I think the church for a really long time, um, I don't mean just our church. I mean, the church for a really long time has, uh, put God in a box in this that I don't think is faithful to scripture. <clears throat> I think that, you know, our God is so big and has a lot of a lot of grace in this area. So that's a long way of saying, you know, um, if you have a friend who uh, is asking this question because they're thinking about it, um, I, it sounds strange, but I don't, I wouldn't completely avoid the law. Does that make sense? Right. No, and, yeah. and we, we shouldn't try to either, but it, it's, yeah. it's sort of its place, right? Yep. So, I, I mean, first and foremost, Thanks be to God that you're still here. Um, thanks be to God that that he, he's not done with you yet. Um, and, yeah. and thanks be to God for his, his law that served as a gift every bit as much as his gospel. Yeah. Um, the the why are you asking this question is, is such an important thing, though. And it, it really does shape that. It's, it's how not only pastors do law and gospel, but it's just sort of the reality that, well, as a friend, you're probably going to hear about it before we as a pastor would. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, um, yeah, with that framework, then it gets you the, the, the opportunity to kind of see what it is that the person is really struggling with, um, you know, what their questions are about. And and then it gives you the, the opportunity, to, I guess, to bring in God's word uh, appropriately. And, um, you know, if it's if it's questions about, um, it's you know, it's happened to a friend or, or family, that sort of thing, um, being able to still comfort with the hope of the gospel. Um, things like that. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know about 
uh, your part of the country, unfortunately, um, out here, we used to, we're actually right next door to a high school. Um, and years ago, we'd be asked to um, uh, help uh, when they had a, a crisis at school, including if a student took a suicide, had a suicide. But um, now, I don't know, the last 10 years, just the, the change in our country and culture and, and system, we're not, we're not allowed to anymore. And um, part of me thinks that's unfortunate, but um, we still do get to kind of, um, uh, in a tangential way, because we have so many students of our own there, you know, we're able to have a discussion with them about it and, and they'll be able to go back to their, their classmates and, and talk about it as well. And that's, that's again, a, a really important thing that, that as friends, you get to, to share the, the peace that comes with this confrontation too. Um, because I mean, when we get to actually the, the gospel of it, uh, we, we get to ask just, like you said, questions that sort of don't, put God in a box he hasn't put himself into. So for example, um, can this sin, and it, it is a sin, um, it, it breaks stuff, like look at all the, the pain that it causes, but can this sin somehow go back in time 2,000 years and put Jesus back in the tomb? Um, right. if, if it isn't that powerful, then then we can still talk about forgiveness. And we can also even just ask, um, do you have to ask specifically for the sin to be forgiven for God to forgive it? And in which case right. my ADHD would condemn me to hell because I can't remember breakfast. Right. Yeah. No. And, and, um, and this is an area where I think, um, especially as Lutherans, we sometimes get kind of, um, um, in some ways talk out of both sides of our mouth, right? Because, um, you know, one of the things we like to emphasize is that we live the, uh, a, a, a baptismal life, a life that's been forgiven. God has made a promise to us that is unconditional. That's based upon his promises the work that Jesus has done in his death, his resurrection, his ascension. Um, and it's regardless of, of, of who and where we are, right? It's the same thing about, you know, Luther <clears throat> arguing in his day about the enumeration of sins. And, you know, was that necessary? I still remember uh, as a student at one of our colleges in California, we had um, occasion to have some transfers from other, came from other Christian denominations and um, particularly ones that came from holiness bodies. I remember they used to live in this fear that, you know, if they, um, whatever, were out partying and got in a car and died, they wouldn't go to heaven because they didn't have a chance to ask for that forgiveness, right? And and we just have a different perspective of that. Um, and I think it applies to the same situation as well, right? Like um, the the depression, the place that the mind goes um, when you're contemplating suicide, and even if you if you go through with it, is um, uh, uh, it, it is a spiritual thing, but it's also a physical neurological thing, right? There's, there's real things that are going on, uh, which is not um, any way to excuse it. But on the other hand, we, we all wrestle with, um, you know, all kinds of things. And there's just as much chance that we might make some stupid decision and die without the chance to, to repent. And so I think that part's not really, I don't want to say irrelevant, but that's not part of the, the discussion. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's placing the hope in the promises of God, right? Not did I, did I do my thing first to, to get me out of it? Does that make sense? Right. That, that makes complete sense. And you said that, like, I, I love the connection between the, the neurological and the spiritual because your body and your mind and your soul, they are connected. And so in the same way that you wouldn't tell somebody, well, just stop having cancer and then you'll mm -hmm. definitely go to heaven. Uh, you wouldn't tell somebody just stop having depression and then you'll never have to worry about the, the, the place of your soul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, no, that's right. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen, there's a commercial uh, on television now that's, um, I think it's in general, just encouraging people to pursue and ask for um, help battling depression and things like that. And the illustration they use, there's a guy in the weight room and he's got way too much on, he's bench pressing and it's, he can't, he can't get the weight up. And the guys on the gym are trying to help him. He's like, no, my, and our family, we work through our problems on our own or, you know, and it, so it just recontextualizes the same thing, right? These mental health issues are, um, are, are, are real things, but it's not, um, you know, we're not, we don't overcome, overcome them by the power of our mind and positive thinking. These are not, um, uh, they're not helpful ways of talking, but it's just, they're not true even, right? Um, any kind of research and understanding of, of mental health issues, you recognize the person is, um, they're caught in a, um, a, a new mental loop, right? Kind of thing, um, just as, as we can uh, create healthy habits, right? Devotional habits in God's word, eating, exercising, we create these positive loops uh, for our lives, we can also get caught in really negative ones, right? And um, I think that's what happens a lot of time with 
with mental health. And so that's why one of the best things you can do when a friend has that question is to, um, is to, you don't want to talk them out of it, but you want to talk, you want to open their eyes to see that there's more than they're seeing at the moment, right? That there's, there's a lot more going on. Um, I have a really good friend here at church who I go fishing with and he grew up, his dad was a, ran funeral homes and um, his dad would take him um, when he was uh, just in high school on some of these, uh, some of these, uh, he grew up in a small town, in Nebraska, and he'd take him out to, to a classmate who died in a car accident or, um, and it just really impressed upon him, right, the, um, the uh, necessity, I guess, uh, even as a young adult to, to be conscious of these things. And to this day, he still will say that suicide is such um, a long-term solution to a short-term problem. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so any discussion you can have, bringing the gospel to them, but, um, but just pointing out, right, that there's, you, you don't want to try to, you can't talk them and argue them out of depression, right? But I do think you can help them see that there are, you know, there's other things that you can point to and say, um, you're kind of, you got blinders on to, to some of the blessings that still remain, some of the, the hope that's still out there, that kind of thing. Um, now, the big thing that we haven't really talked about is, um, you know, nowadays, you know, when, <laughs> as a friend, would you um, uh, seek help, right, for your, like, like, when is it time to, like, talk to their parents or a teacher or, or something like that? And that, gosh, that's such a hard thing, don't you think? Right. And I mean, it's, it's such an important one, too, because I, I mean, it, it, when you are the trusted one that somebody comes to with this, you want to help them, you love them, you want to fix them. But like in the same way, I love my wife. But if she needed brain surgery, I should not be the one with the scalpel because. Right. Me. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. When do you look to, to vocation? When do you look to, to somebody who's actually trained and equipped? And how do you convince them to go with you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think that'd be the thing is that that's your your first step has to be like, um, let's us go talk to someone about it not you should talk to someone about it get back to me let's us go uh go and do it uh and it may cut you know it may come to a place where they're um they're refusing and you know you're really really worried about it um you know out here we have um safe to tell talk lines and and um and other suicide prevention ones that can be of help and kind of coaching people through it not just people who are considering it but people are trying to help right? Those, those professionals know what they're doing. That can always be a, um, a resource. But I think, yeah, that first step is a great one, which is, well, let's us go talk to someone about it. Because right away, you're removing part of the problem for them is, is the isolation and, and, and feeling alone, right? That's at the heart of almost all, um, I think, not, I wouldn't say depression, but people who are considering suicide, right, is they think that they're alone and there's no other options. Yeah. It, it's not good uh, for, for man to be alone. And, and this is what happens when he's, he's left alone is he tries to find salvation in himself. He can't. And this kind of thing happens. Um, yeah, but to, man turned you know, on himself. Yeah. To even just sort of reframe the conversation, even before you go into it, one of the things maybe to, to consider is that it's not your job to save your friend as much as you might want to. It's Jesus' job. And <laughs> he already did. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and I think that's true in so many places of our our um, life that we actually, um, when God brings us into these moments and situations, we're joining Jesus in a place he's already at. Right. We're not the bringers of Jesus to a, a, a situation, but for whatever reason, in his wisdom, he he's decided to use us in that moment. Um, and then the, the cool thing to me about that, I mean, it's the only reason I'm a pastor is because it's not up to me, right? I'm right. joining Jesus in something he's doing. If it was up to me, I'd be, I don't know, selling insurance or something else, I guess, right? A little more sane. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so it can, it, you know, I think those are, those are true of everyone's vocations, but especially when you look at, at uh, these, these callings and times of friendship and um, when, when God's brought you into a person's life at a, at a moment like this, um, you're joining him, right? He's already there. You're joining him. And, and that should give, I think, some comfort and hope as well. Absolutely. Um, Man, we, we, we had a lot already. This has been outstanding stuff. Is there anything else we kind of want to tackle before we, we sign off for the day? Um, yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, uh, I just you know, encourage you to um, find out the why of the question when you're talking about it with your friends, um, especially, and if you're struggling with yourself, uh, always, ask, uh, always ask for help because um, God has placed uh, people all over our lives to to give us a hope um, and remind us of the hope that he we have in him.
Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here with us, Pastor. Uh, it was great to have you. Absolutely. Enjoy uh, your warm weather in Iowa. <laughs> it's the worst. Um, speaking of the worst, uh, if, if you or, or someone you love is struggling with this, uh, reach out to your pastor, reach out to parents, reach out to the, the helplines that we're going to place in the comments here. But uh, the Lord sustain you. Yeah, absolutely. God bless.